Well, welcome to today's Herbal Hour class on neurodegenerative disorders. Hi, I'm Mary Bourne. I'm a nat traditional naturopath. And I love sharing natural remedies with people because they've been around for hundreds, even thousands of years, and they work. So today, uh, we're going to go over uh, what neurodegenerative disorders mean where we now know where some of them come from or possibility of coming from and what we can do to not only avoid them, but perhaps even help uh, with the conditions that are present maybe to reverse uh, the symptoms of them. There is basically no medical cure for neurodegenerative diseases. So um, they occur when the nerve cells in the brain or peripheral nervous system lose function and ultimately die. Uh, some examples of them are Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, known as ALS and Huntington's disease. Now that's just some of them. There's uh, other minor uh, categories, but they all involve the brain and the peripheral nervous system. So some symptoms of neurodegeneration is apathy where people just, they don't care. Um, or they do the other thing where they're just filled with anxiety. Everything makes them nervous. They uh, obsess about a lot of different things. And um, some have insomnia and fatigue. Naturally, if you don't sleep, you're gonna be fatigued. Rigid muscles, problems with balance, uh, sexual dysfunction, changes in speech, tremors, difficulty with movement that used to come automatically like blinking. Degenerative disease, all degenerative diseases are interlinked and have similar root causes. Neurodegenerative diseases are not necessarily distinct. People usually have symptoms of more than one chronic and degenerative disease at the same time. And we in the natural health field feel that there are some basic deficiencies that the body is dealing with and that precipitates the dying of the nervous system. So for instance, people with Parkinson's often have symptoms of Alzheimer's and vice versa. The most important thing to remember is that neurodegenerative diseases are not inevitable problems associated with aging. So even though there are some people that say that aging is a huge, el huge element, um, we're not so sure. We, we have seen this happen in young people, middle age, which we consider 45 now, <laughs> not 30. Um, so, it really is not about aging. You'll see some people talking about um, the telomeres where this is like the end of the shoelace that has that plastic coating. And um, eventually it gets shorter and shorter until there's no more plastic coating and the shoelace just frays at the end. And we're still discovering what keeps that coating intact, what helps to um, elongate it, make it more durable. And these are the things that science is working with and discovering on a practically daily basis. So we protect ourselves from them in the same way we protect ourselves from all chronic and degenerative disease with good nutrition and some of the things we're gonna talk about. So I'm going to 
moved me out of the picture here. Hopefully that works in the recording. So <clears throat> this is um, like the healthy brain in Alzheimer's disease. This is what the brain looks like. This is this yellow stuff is called placking, and it's named after the German neurologist, Louise uh, Alzheimer. Uh, abnormal protein deposits form plaques. Twisted fibers of a protein called tau build up inside the cells and damage begins in the area of the brain responsible for memory and spreads. So you can see all the deterioration here. We're gonna talk about this black area in just a little bit, but this is from the um, NCBI uh, National Health uh, website, and you can get more information. And I'll link that in the description below so that you can find it more easily. So, Again, there's the healthy brain all filled in, lovely uh, gray matter. It looks beige there, but <laughs> it's gray matter. And this is the Alzheimer's brain. It's all kind of chewed up and, and not well developed anymore. And it comes with confusion with time or place, uh, trouble following conversations. And you realize too that there may be other factors like eyesight or hearing that can contribute to this. Uh, for my own part, I realized that I add to my hearing abilities with reading lips and with this mask situation, it makes it very difficult for me to sometimes hear or watch what the person is saying. There are particular tones that are not able, not easily heard. Uh, if people don't enunciate and they speak fast or they have a difficult accent, these will all contribute to a person losing interest in the conversation. So if you have somebody in your family, be conscious of this, be aware that Maybe you need to speak more clearly and not just muffle your words so that the conversation can include them. And memory loss, uh, it's, it's more than just forgetting your keys. It's not being able to connect different things. So it's uh, sometimes trouble with familiar tasks, you know? all of a sudden forget how to do the things uh, and misplacing things. Well, you know, everybody misplaces things, but it's consistently misplacing things. Um, there are tricks that you can do, uh, leaving yourself notes, making detailed lists, uh, those type of things. Um, but the big thing is the change in mood and personality there are definitely things we can do to help with that. Now, what may help uh, increase these risk factors? Well, head injuries. You know, a lot of times uh, I see people, well, youngsters uh, playing soccer and they want to do head shots. And what they don't realize, and Dr. Amen is really good about discussing how head injuries are a horrible risk and that nobody, no child should play soccer because of that. But what he says is the inside of the skull, the brain is like custard. And when you hit it, it jiggles and that causes trauma in the head. So every time you hit the head, you're causing trauma to the brain. And maybe as a young person, you can overcome that with the right nutrition. But a lot of people are not eating healthy, especially when they're closed down, they feel depressed and they're secluded and they'll eat junk. So we're gonna talk about what you can do to lower the risks. 
low cholesterol is a huge problem. You know, the medical community wants your cholesterol below 150. And this is a dangerous level, especially for people who are aging because your brain needs fat and it needs lots of good fat. And that fat comes from cholesterol. You manufacture um, your hormones with cholesterol. High blood pressure is also a problem because of the pressure uh, on the blood vessels. High blood sugar is probably one of the biggest contributing factors. So that's one thing we're gonna look into as far as how we can support the body better. Advancing age, exposure to environmental toxins. So it actually depends on where you live, how clean the air is. If you live in a wooded area, you're uh, going to be breathing in some good oxygen from the trees and that. And I have to add, wearing a mask inhibits the ability for your body to pull in as much oxygen as you need. So do not wear the mask. Uh, there's plenty of information out there that show that wearing a mask really doesn't work. And if you want some information on that, I'll be happy to do that. And I'm hopefully that this doesn't take me off of YouTube because I'm saying that. Uh, don't you love it? So, uh, and there is advancing age, you know, people as they age tend not to want to cook meals. They want to do, I've had so many clients come in and tell me they eat cereal for dinner. You know, there can't be anything less nutritious than a thing of cereal. Sorry. So uh, exposure to aluminum and mercury is a huge factor. We um, our you know our our teeth. Uh, most of us uh, have fillings in them. They're amalgam that have mercury in them. We were told they were silver fillings, but we now know that there are a great percentage of them are mercury, um, aluminum. We grew up in an age where there was uh, a lot of cooking in aluminum foil. People still cook with aluminum foil. And if you're going to at least line it with a uh, parchment paper so that your food isn't getting that uh, contact with the aluminum. Aluminum pots and pans, most people are not doing that anymore. And, um, and most people have learned that Teflon is not a good thing to uh, eat off of. And currently there's no medical cure. So uh, Parkinson's disease was named after the Engli English, whoops, sorry, uh, English physician named James Parkinson. It's a chronic pro progressive disease of the nervous system. It involves the destruction of neurotransmitters that produce dopamine. And it may also cause depression, fatigue, difficulty sleeping, sexual dysfunction, trouble speaking, eating, and smooth movements like walking. So here is the uh, substantia nigra. Now nigra in Latin means black. And so this is an area <clears throat> of the brain that uh, instead of gray matter, it is a very dark color. So that's how it got its name. And in Parkinson's, it actually shrinks. Now, <clears throat> we think that there's a high level of metals in here. And that's what makes it dark. And iron displaces it. And silica displaces iron. And so if you uh, get tested and you have high amounts of iron in your blood, uh, zinc also is well known for displacing that. So between silica and zinc, those are two minerals that are really good uh, to take. Now, uh, 
Some of the risk factors are old age, being male, exposure to pesticides. And I think men uh, have, you know, because of some of the things they do, the projects with uh, solvents, um, using things that break down fat or painting, uh, using chemicals that they're breathing in and not using protective gear. Now we know more about using the masks that have the filters on the sides that can um, stop the breathing in of these uh, uh, toxins. Uh, damage to uh, our exposure to pesticides. You know, it's often the men that go out there and they use the sprays to kill the weeds and really need to look into how breathing that in, absorbing it through the skin is detrimental. Um, damage to the, the substance Negra that we just showed, um, exposure to chemicals, and there's currently no medical cure. And some of the symptoms are uh, masked facial expression, um, stooped posture, um, back rigidity, a forward tilt of the trunk. So I have a, this downward look. They awful, often shuffle their feet. Um, this slow movement is called bradykinesia and fixed elbows and wrists. So flexibility is important and the mineral, mineral silica is really important. We have uh, horsetail. Horsetail is an herb that is high in silica and um, helps with flexibility. So then there's um, multiple sclerosis. Now, there's a lot of information out there that there's an autoimmune disease element of this. So I want to break for just a minute and discuss the book, Plague of Corruption. If you're interested in this subject, uh, Judy Mikovits is wonderful in explaining the possibility, her scientific evidence that shows that in the 1930s, something triggered our immune system to go haywire. I can't really go into it and stay on YouTube, but I, if you're at all interested in learning about the XMM, X, XMRV virus, I think that you should look into it because there are links to uh, autoimmune conditions, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, and cancer. She also related it to a high incidence of Alzheimer's. So uh, her findings dovetailed with parental reports of autistic regression following vaccination. Subsequent studies linked XMRV to epidemics in leukemia, prostate cancer, autoimmune disease, and the explosion of Alzheimer's. So it would be worth your while. Again, it's Plague of Corruption by Judy Mikovits, and I'll link it in the description below. Uh, I'll also link um, a video that I started with, we started our book club. This was the first book in our book club and uh, I couldn't put it down. It was really, really that interesting. So if you like researching, you might wanna look into that. So the uh, immune system attacks the myelin sheath and you can see here, this is the myelin sheath that covers the nerve bundle, it 
it's sort of like the nerves are a bunch of thin wires that are put together and then you have like a plastic protector around those wires just to keep them together. <clears throat> and if they disintegrate, that the, when this uh, sheath disintegrates, then you can get short circuiting and it can happen as jerky movements or inability to sustain a position. So it's a weakness, fatigue, debility, and numbness. Um, they occur in varied regions of the body and it depends on the nerves affected by uh, whatever it is. So symptoms and risk factors, well, being female, they're finding that MS has a lot to do with uh, female, I, we're not sure if it's the hormones or what, but certain viral infections. And so, you know, that makes it stronger, the link between how vaccinations work and the concern with using a vaccine to meliate viruses like the MMR, the you know, measles is a, va a virus, uh, polio was a virus, the, all these things. And now with this new vaccine that's never been, it's not tested properly. It usually takes 12, 15 years to test vaccines and we're still finding that they cause problems. So I, I think it's um, actually, criminal to mandate vaccines. And then also to consider the fact that people aren't being allowed the information to make a, a, make a decision on something that they're not being told all the truth about it. So, so do your own investigations before you have anything put into your body. So um, living in a temperate climate. So in other words, that's a concern that they're finding people that live in these temperate climates where there's no freeze off. Uh, so, but the big, big thing here that you have total control over is low levels of vitamin D. We are finding that this epidemic of low levels of vitamin D is contributing to not only viral load, but viral replication. And there is no downside to taking vitamin D. It is totally safe as long as you take it in the form of D3. Um, D2 is somewhat toxic and builds up, but D3 is utilized. It has, it, it's used in over 400 functions of the body. They're still discovering more. Um, and having other autoimmune diseases might be because of this low level vitamin D concern. Now, of course, there's currently no medical cure. There's no vaccine for it. There's no drug that's going to uh, cure it. Um, there's some that control the symptoms of it, but then they too have side effects. So one must be careful of that. Now, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis used to be called Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, it's just now called ALS. And we're finding more and more of this. And it makes you wonder if this um, XMRV, which is found in millions of people, uh, blood supply, uh, it's, I think the epidemic um, caused by medicine. So uh, what happens in a normal nerve cell, you see the 
nerve impulse contracts the muscle. And when that same nerve is trying to make that muscle work because of the brokenness of the uh, myelin sheath, so little of that energy actually flows to the muscle and it doesn't get the message. So it's a rare, well, not so rare anymore. Um, I, we're hearing more and more and more of it. Uh, it's a progressive degenerative condition and uh, it affects the brain and spinal cord that control the different muscles. So it's like swallowing, I mean, all, all of your muscles in the heart. Uh, it's characterized by increasing and spreading muscular weakness that eventually lead to paralysis. So they have difficulty walking, they trip and fall. There's leg weakness, slurred speech, excessive choking because the swallowing reflex doesn't, uh, doesn't happen. There's hand weakness, muscle cramps. So um, neurotoxicity due to overactivation of glutamate. Now we're gonna go into some of the helpers for this. Um, there also may be an autoimmune component. We are thinking also that the immune system is attacking the muscles, getting the wrong information. You know, when, when you get a vaccine like this new vaccine that's coming out and the immune system is in hyper mode. It's waiting for a virus to come into the host so that it can attack it. Well, if there isn't a virus that comes in, then it starts looking for things that look like viruses. And your immune system has bits and pieces, you know, colds are viruses. You may have a little bit of a, of a cold, piece or particle held in the immune system. And because of this hypersensitivity, it now sees the immune system as something it has to attack. So it's, it really gives the wrong messages. Your body has a very beautifully designed immune system that God gave you and it shouldn't be messed with as far as I'm concerned. So um, mitochondrial dysfunction and oxidative stress are huge factors. And exposure to lead, you know, we had lead gasoline forever. Again, we go with the head injuries, anything to do with the brain, you have to consider having a concussion or being in a fight where your head is hit, uh, pesticides, exposure to excessive electromagnetic ra radiation. Now that's a new one we're factoring in, but it's huge. Holding a cell phone to your head is sending that harmful energy uh, directly into your body. Last month, we discussed that, a link, uh, the class in the description below so that you can watch that class and um, understand a little bit better about electromagnetic radiation. And of course there's no medical care. <laughs> uh, Huntington's disease. Now they feel that there is a genetic component to Huntington's, but like any gene promoting disease, it's, the gene has to be unwrapped. There is a epigenetic covering over that gene and it isn't until something occurs to unwrap that gene that it expresses. So if you can protect it with good nutrition, um, good thoughts, you know, the brain is thoughts. Um, breathing good oxygen, 
all of these factors can prevent you from unwrapping that gene. Now, Huntington's, uh, uh, it affects motor coordination. It causes involuntary jerky movements. Uh, it leads to dementia and disability. And of course, there's no medical cure. So how they identify it is that uh, there's enlargement of the frontal horns of the lateral ventricles. Uh, so these can be seen in scans. So let's talk prevention. First of all, protect the brain from injury. I mean, that's just common sense. So there is a possibility, and I think more probability, that physical trauma to the brain or nerves, especially if it doesn't heal properly, can cause neurodegenerative disease later on. So it's not you know, going to manifest right away. If you have a concussion, they want you to stay awake and do you know your name and all of these things. But that injury scars over and maybe exa is exacerbated when you come into other traumas, especially if it doesn't heal right. If you don't give it good fats and uh, <clears throat> some of the other things that we talk about to heal properly, then you're going to have a residual occurrence. So protect the brain. Exercise, because I think when you exercise, you just will automatically want to do deeper breathing. So concentrate every day. Make sure you're doing some deep breathing exercise and get up and move around. Uh, sedentary lifestyle increases the risk for neurological disorders. Regular, moderate physical activity, gardening, walking, all of these things will show um, reduce risk to dementia, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's. So oxygen, 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 the brain needs oxygen. So uh, people who regularly engage in challenging mental activities have a lower risk of neurological disorders. So this can be as simple as playing challenging games like chess or solving a crossword puzzle. Keep learning new skills like playing an instrument, crafts, etc. Challenge yourself to learn different things and um, engage in fun activities. It's really a shame that we're told to stay home, to stay alive, because I think it's stay home and die. We need other people around us. We need these activities. The fact that they've closed senior centers is a really detrimental thing for senior health. If you don't use it, you lose it. And that certainly applies to the brain. So making sure that you get exercise helps you get good, adequate sleep. So many adults struggle with uh, sleep as they get older. And uh, we're going to talk about some of the remedies for, for this. So lack of sleep may be a contributing factor in developing neurological disorders. So know how much sleep you need. But Traditionally, what they say is you need three 90-minute solid segments. So if you sleep for an hour and a half, and then you wake up and you go to the bathroom, and you come back and you sleep for another solid 90 minutes, and you get up and you go to the bathroom, that's okay. Because it's these 90-minute cycles that help your brain to cleanse so your brain actually shrinks during these cycles to allow fluids 
to wash it. So your brain goes through the car wash. <laughs> so unfortunately, some of the drug medications usually uh, used by people to help them sleep keeps the brain at a level where they don't, where it doesn't shrink and allow this cleansing to occur. Now some of the, you know, oxygen breathing in, that helps to cleanse the brain. Drinking enough water, you've got to have the fluids. Um, so uh, make sure that your brain is detoxifying during sleep. Uh, eating a low glycemic diet. We know that there's a huge factor <clears throat> with inflammation in the brain and sugar contributes to that. So um, you want to avoid sugar and simple carbohydrates. Make sure you're getting enough fruits. You know, there's a lot to be said for an apple a day. <laughs> you know, those old sayings, they sometimes have a lot of merit. <laughs> um, to, uh, try to keep fasting uh, blood sugar below 90. And now they recommend 100, but 100 is borderline uh, diabetic. So you uh, definitely want to stay above or below that. So, so anywhere between 75 and 90 is really a, a good number. That belly fat, lose it. Try your best to do um, something to decrease that. Uh, it's a, a risk, you know, fat here is losing fat up here. <laughs> So losing weight by adopting a healthier diet and lifestyle helps prevent all uh, degenerative diseases. So <clears throat> let's talk about some natural therapies. Uh, there are no specific cures for any neurodegenerative disease. Let me make this perfectly clear. It isn't one thing. There is no one cure. There's a plethora of things that you can do, but it can't be cured, okay? The only thing that can be cured is a ham. So <laughs> when medicine offers no solutions except symptomatic treatment, there is little to be lost and much to be gained by experimenting with natural remedies. Remember what I said in the beginning, They've been around for hundreds, even thousands of years because they work. They really do give you more vitality. They give you a clearer ability to think. At the very least, you may improve symptoms or slow the progress of the disease. So I want to tell you about my friend Donna, whose husband has ALS. Donna was my, uh, helped me with cleaning. And she and her husband moved down to Florida 12 years ago after Michael had been diagnosed with ALS. Now he had had the condition two years and because of uh, not being able to get the nerve energy to his hands and feet, he was cold all the time. So they went down to Florida and Donna picked up a lot of information from me. She used to read my newsletters avidly and she understood quite a bit about good nutrition. And she attributes the fact that Michael is still with her after 14 years with ALS. Now he's not in the best of health. He is on a feeding tube. He has very little use of muscles, but the fact that he's still with her is because she puts vitamin B in his feeding tube. She puts curcumin in it. She gives him herbs to support the best she can do to give him whatever good life he has left in him. How wonderful is that? Every Christmas, I get a thank you. Michael is still with her. So, you know, 
who can you help by sharing this information? So the approach needs to be targeted to the person. You need to make sure, now there's lots of things that are in general, like I said, vitamin D, the importance of it, but there are some things that are more specific because you know this person needs to get off sugar or they need to get more movement going. There's things that are individual, but there are a lot of things that are general. We all need to eat a healthy diet. We all need to breathe better. We all need to eat sleep and we all need exercise. And we know that these things will help improve most any condition. <clears throat> this sugar cube reminds me of when I got polio vaccine. Who knows what was in that polio vaccine? It's a very disturbing thing, but I think that it isn't what you know won't hurt you, it's what you don't know will definitely hurt you. So high blood sugar overexcites the brain and increases inflammatory responses, which is considered glutamate. <coughs> Excuse me. If the person has metabolic syndrome, which is like the leading contributing factor to diabetes <laughs> or even abdominal fat, they need to get their blood sugar down. So a lot of people, there's good information about the cinnamon, about alpha lipoic acid, even about coconut oil. So some of these things, you know, what will it hurt to try it, to put it in your diet? Now, fermented foods have good bacteria and we know about the gut brain uh, connection. Why not do a YouTube class or two on fermenting food? I've been enjoying that for since September. I've been doing a lot of trial and error on fermented foods. We've done sauerkraut for years and my husband absolutely loves it, but we've canned it. Now, <clears throat> these don't last as long as if you can them, but they're delicious. They're a great adjunct. We tried this cabbage. It's a red cabbage. It's sweet. It's a lovely slaw to have as a side dish. You need to add fermented foods. Now, <clears throat> you can do kefir, you can, or kefir, <laughs> you can do yogurt. There's a lot of different varieties. Don't have to do milk if you don't want to. These are done. Um, you can make vinegar. Vinegar is a fermenta fermentation process, but Eating fermented foods calms the brain and reduces inflammation, uh, such as anxiety and fear. And we have been inundated with fear. So we need to upgrade our diet and shut off the fear mongers. Stop listening to news. Stop paying attention to Twitter or Facebook or any of the other things that upset you. Find other avenues of, you know, take some classes. One of the biogenics found in fermented foods is gamma aminobutyric acid, which is known as GABA. And GABA in the gut activates the vagus nerve. Now I did a class on the vagus nerve and you can get uh, that information on my YouTube channel, and I'll link to that in the description below. So this is the primary nerve. I like to call it the gossip nerve because it goes and gives information to the brain on all the things that are happening in the body. And Vegas is known as wander. So it wanders throughout the entire body getting information and giving information. 
So GABA is an extremely important element and we need it. It also probiotic foods like this, the vegetable or the fruit is a prebiotic. So apples are great prebiotics. They feed the good bacteria. And so it's really important to get raw, good. These are all raw, not cooked. Raw foods and fermented is even better. And protein, you know, there's a lot of people that poo-poo protein, but neurotransmitters are formed from amino acids and amino acids break down from protein. So make sure you're able to get adequate grass-fed beef, heritage pork and salmon, and bone broth. There's nothing greater for you than a mug of bone broth, or if that's not appealing, collagen. There's great collagen out there um, that can be a good substitute for actually, if you can't eat a steak, you don't really need this big of a steak. You need three ounces. So supplements like algae or free amino acids, they supply um, in, uh, the body with uh, stabilizing effects and uh, help the brain and uh, balance blood sugar levels. So make sure you're getting your protein. Now, increase antioxidants and reduce inflammation. So reduce oxidative stress to the brain with antioxidant neutrals, nutrients. Now there's some of the antioxidants that are targeted for brain health. Now you have inflammation sometimes throughout the body. If you have aches and pains, you have inflammation basically. Um, turmeric and curcumin, alpha lipoic acid, the fat soluble vitamins like A, D3, E, and K. Uh, vitamin C is a great antioxidant. Zinc, because it uh, displaces mercury, it also is uh, beneficial in uh, inhibiting viral replication uh, because uh, viruses and infections increase inflammation. So improve mitochondrial function, uh, a breakdown excuse me, uh, of mitochondrial function and increasing free radical, free radical damage will damage the brain and nerves. So some of the things that you want to look into are magnesium. Now, magnesium is called the mineral relaxer. And uh, there's a whole book written about magnesium. You can do topicals of magnesium and let it absorb into the skin. Uh, there's magnesium that help with bowel elimination. Uh, there's magnesium that's targeted for the brain like um, L-theanate, uh, zinc again, CoQ10, alpha lipoic acid, B-complex vitamins, we heard about how important that is for the nervous system. And of course, vitamin B, um, C. So uh, vitamin B plays a critical role in formation of neurotransmitters and in the production of energy within the cell. Now, we just talked about the mitochondria and that's the source of the energy in the cell. Research results are mixed, but they may be helpful in preventing or slowing neurodegenerative diseases. Well, you know how research goes? It depends on who's paying for the research, unfortunately. So B is necessary for nerve health. Uh, we know that as a fact. So taking omega-3 essential fatty acids, the brain is mostly fat, 50 to 60%. And most of this is omega-3, essential fatty acids, uh, EPA and DHA. Now they say that DHA is targeted for better brain health and EPA helps with the heart. So make sure you're getting them both. Um, omega-3 essential fatty acids are essential to brain function. Now, most of the time, 
the usable high sources of it are found in your grass-fed beef, uh, uh, organic uh, chickens that are raised, uh, farm-raised in peck uh, seeds and grass, um, your heritage pigs, animals that run around and get fresh air, you know, they can't help but be healthier than the cage ones. Um, like I said, bone broth from bones that are made from these animals is wonderful. You want to avoid refined vegetable oils. Anything fried is going to have these bad oils on them. Uh, hydrogenation of fats causes fatty acids to change their structure and the actual breakdown. And when the brain uses that, it causes faulty thinking. So um, it, when incorporated into the brain tissue, they cause the tissues to function abnormally. So you wanna look at that with chicken uh, McNuggets and those type of things. And if your child is hyperactive, uh, we're finding a lot more um, non-alcohol fatty uh, liver disease uh, in children that eat a lot of fried foods. So make sure they're getting their vegetables, call them broccoli trees, you know, make them interesting. Do celery boats with uh, good healthy peanut butter. Um, make the food interesting. Uh, apple a day again for children. So um, bad fats are cooked at high temperatures. So even olive oil can turn into a bad fat. Olive oil is not meant for high temperatures, coconut oil, ghee, um, those type of food uh, uh, can even lard can cook at high temperatures, bacon grease and not break down. So um, take coconut oil. A lot of people have seen improvements just by eating a couple of tablespoons of coconut oil uh, two or three times a day. Doctors who have worked with it find that it helps virtually all people suffering from dementia. You can put a tablespoon of it in oatmeal and add a little cinnamon, a little honey. Um, it is easily digested. Um, it kills off a lot of the uh, yeast that can imbalance the gut. Uh, and it may be helpful for other neurological conditions such as ALS, epilepsy, schizophrenia, and autism. Uh, it contains ketones, which help the brain. You start with one tablespoon uh, three times a day with food, you know, the oil pulling. Uh, putting it in your mouth and squishing it in between the teeth is found uh, very beneficial. There's a huge relationship to the bacteria that's in the mouth and the effects of the brain. So um, there's more evidence being uh, discovered on a daily basis on uh, mask mouth. So there's a whole, you know, a lot of this research, unfortunately, is not in the mainstream media. You have to look at other sources and, uh, you know, people who have been banned from like Facebook and it's just criminal the way uh, we're censored from good, important information just to line the pockets of the pharmaceutical industry like they need it. So you want to take fat soluble vitamins. Um, the importance of vitamin D cannot be uh, expressed enough. Uh, vitamin D helps protect the brain from inflammation and may help damage neurons regenerate. So you know it's if it's not protecting, it, it can help even reverse some of these things. Now vitamin E, there's a lot to be said. Uh, Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative disorders. Vitamin E is long known for uh, its help. Uh, K regulates calcium utilization. It may even avoid 
uh, help avoid plaquing. Uh, magnesium helps with mitochondrial function. It also aids the development of new synapses. Uh, magnesium 3 and 8 is a special form of magnesium developed at uh, MIT, which allows magnesium to be to cross that blood brain barrier much easier. So, research suggests magnesium 3 and 8 improves memory and general cognitive function. Metal de uh, detoxification there are herbs that are specific for helping the body to detox. Uh, mercury is very damaging to the nerves. Mercury detoxification has helped many people. Leave. There have been some that have done foot baths and gotten rid of heavy metals and eventually gotten rid of MS symptoms. So <clears throat> aluminum displaces silicon in the brain. The other, so we, if you want to reverse that, do more things that uh, like have silica, like horsetail. Um, herbs that create some flexibility. Um, so silica helps detoxify aluminum. Uh, excess iron in the nervous system can cause oxidative stress. So we know zinc displaces iron and the substance nigra is high in iron. So you wanna get rid of that, right? <clears throat> now, controversial subject here. There are some states that still don't want you to take CBD. And I really think it's because the pharmaceutical industry has such a strong lobby in those states. Um, but there is huge evidence that the endocannabinoid system is a balancer that is affected when we are dealing with these degenerative diseases. And so I urge you to look at the article written by um, in nature.com and I'll link that in the description below. I'll also link a class I did on understanding the endocannabinoid system. Um, so you have a lot of homework you can do if you want to. <laughs> So CBD and the neuro and neurodegenerative disease. There is research that suggests CBD may be helpful in ALS, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's disease, and multiple sclerosis. And that also will be linked. Now the CB1 receptor, that's something we know. We are all born with CB1 receptors and that's cannabinoid one. And we have something that we naturally produce. And um, I discuss it thoroughly in the uh, endocannabinoid system class that I did. And uh, the ECS is, stimulates neurogenesis, especially in the hippocampus. And this is your messenger uh, part of the brain. And uh, the endocannabinoid system reduces inflammation of the neurons. It helps protect against overexcitability of the neurons. So, you know, there's huge, huge studies uh, how this would benefit. And yet you're not hearing about it from the mainstream media because they want to get that fear tactic going. So a study where participants were given CBD or a placebo showed that a single dose of CBD enhanced blood flow to the key regions of the brain involved in memory processing, uh, particularly the hippocampus. So it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. CBD, when it is taken from hemp, has virtually no THC in it. So it's non-toxic. So here's another, it's a California study that um, was done in 2016 by the Salk Institute for Biological Studies found that cannabis compounds, including CBD, can remove plaque forming proteins from lab grown neurons. Now that's lab grown, but you know what? They're making a vaccine on a lab grown virus. So if it's good enough for that, it's certainly good enough for you to try. 
And a similar study found that CBD oil administered to mice inhibiting, exhibiting symptoms of Alzheimer's not only produced improvements in their cognitive ability, the mice also showed less evidence of amyloid ac accumulation in their bodies. Well, remember amyloid plaquing and Alzheimer? So that's huge. So you want to make sure that if you're using CBD, that you're going to use something that is high quality and backed by research. And I'll link um, the ones I use in the description below. So when life gets you frazzled, rest easy with the superior power of Kemp Calm. Uh, it's a type of CBD that has herbs in it and essential oils and they're targeted benefits for calming the nerves and uh, helping the brain. Uh, it features skeletorium tortuosum, clove and lemon glass, uh, lemongrass and it's really, really important. Now we know about turmeric and curcumin. Uh, they both uh, are involved in it. Uh, you can get curcumin uh, capsules uh, that has turmeric in it. And uh, that's going to give you a higher percentage of the active ingredient. And there's huge studies on that. Ginkgo biloba that's been around for years, beautiful leaf. It's called uh, the tree of life. It's old as the oldest tree um, in the world. Uh, improves memory and concentration in the elderly, helps to stabilize the brain with dementia and Alzheimer's, Bacopa, increases the retention rate of newly acquired information. So having that in your system helps you remember better. It aids cognitive function. It's great antioxidant. We talked about the importance of antioxidants, helps with anxiety and depression, and also helps with the cons consolidation of memory. So piecing those things together. Oda cola decreases anxiety and depression. Don't you just love that leaf? Um, AIDS sleep has neuroprotective effects, uh, immune modulating activity, anti-seizure activity may be beneficial in Alzheimer's uh, and or Parkinson's. So Chinese club moss, that is a beautiful uh, herb that um, has the uh, element of herpazine A, and um, it's when they gave it to 29 Alzheimer patients, it showed um, improvement in more than half of those that took it. And research in China suggests that 60% of people with Alzheimer's disease showed significant cognitive improvement when given herpazine A. So really, really important. Uh, we have uh, brain and memory protection that has a lot of the things we talked about for supporting better brain health. We have a memory enhancing formula with gota cola, uh, bacopa, ginkgo, and that magnesium threonate studied by MIT. And rosemary for remembrance. Uh, carnosic acid is one of the active ingredients in rosemary, and researchers believe it helps protect the brain by stabbing off free radicals that may lead to stroke and neurodegenerative conditions. Eating the herb rosemary, you know, have a little bit with chicken or whatever, um, and using the essential oil have been both uh, shown to in studies to uh, protect the brain and support brain health. Lemongrass. Great essential oil. The properties of most interest uh, in terms of Alzheimer's disease. However, uh, oxidative, anti-inflammatory, anti-colonized uh, esterase properties of this uh, lemongrass, uh, fabulous. Um, so this is getting a lot longer than I thought. So I'm kind of rushing through this but I'll give you the information from life science. So I hope that you've enjoyed today's class, that you share this information with others, that you give me a thumbs up and like this. Uh,
comment. I'd love to hear from you. If you have specific uh, questions, you can email me, Dr. Mary at bornforhealth.com. And I loved sharing this information with you. I hope that you uh, keep looking in on my channel. Uh, once a month, I do these uh, extended classes called Herbal Hours. And uh, every week on Tuesday, I do uh, mini classes uh, that this year, 2021, I'm focusing on single herbs. I just did one on garlic. This Tuesday, I'll be doing one on ginger. So lots of great health information with lots of great links for research that you can do your own. So I wanna thank you for uh, spending this time with me today. And I hope that you make 2021 a great year of learning.